I want to talk about how we obtained authority. And what I'd like to do is just take the Bible. I'm going to try to read these scriptures and let the Bible talk to you about itself. In other words, give it to you in the words of scripture so that there's no denying what happened and, and the fact that we have authority. In the last program, I used Ephesians 1, 18, 17, 18, and 19, where Paul talked about how Jesus, uh, the power that he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand, far above all principalities and powers. And we made the statement that we're his body. So if Jesus is far above all principalities and powers, so are we. He immediately delegated this authority to the church. But I want to go through some of these scriptures that talk about the actual victory of Christ over the kingdom of darkness. And if you didn't get this series, uh, see this, I'd like for you to get all this teaching. But we talked a lot about the kingdom of darkness and how Satan has a right to be here. His kingdom is set up all over the world and it's, it's, it's behind war and suffering and sickness and disease and, and pain. And, and all of these things are works of darkness. And, uh, and thank God Jesus did something for us to set us free from this. And first scripture we'll go to is 1 John 3, 8. It says, He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that He might destroy the works of the devil. And that is a powerful statement. If Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil, He was successful. He did it. He did what He came to do. He went back to heaven and sat down. So as far as you and I are concerned, the works of the devil are destroyed in our lives. And we just need to make sure that we're enforcing that, standing on scriptures that promise that. And, and when it's not so, let's not take it sitting down. One of the things that I realized in studying the subject of authority is many times we just put up with too much. And if we're going to put up with it, then nothing's going to change. But when we decide that's it, enough is enough, and we begin to stand and take our right, uh, authority, begin to demand our rights in Christ, things have to happen. The principle is whatever you bind on earth, he binds in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, he looses in heaven. So we are really the, the ones who initiate this process. God is waiting to back us up. And if we don't ever initiate anything, then He doesn't have anything to back up. And that's how authority works. When a police officer runs into a problem, he knows that if, if it escalates, he's got the entire state behind him to back him up. But he's the one that's at the point of contact. He's the one that initiates the, the situation, the politicians aren't out there fighting evil. They're not out there, uh, you know, apprehending criminals. The, it's, the, it's the officers on the front line. But they know that they're operating in the authority of the state and that, that the state is standing behind them. And it's the same with us. We can't allow uh, certain things to go on. We shouldn't allow them. And when we take a stand, things go into motion. Heaven is standing with you and behind you. Uh, Hebrews 2:14 and 15 says, "Inasmuch as then as children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same." And that's just saying Jesus became a human. He was born in a human body, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. That's us. We've been released. We've been delivered. He took the sting of death. We still have to die. Yeah, we die physically, but he took the sting of death. And really, for the Christian, death is just a, a promotion. We're just moving. You know, have you ever noticed how in the Bible, they, the writers, they, they really don't want to use the word death when it applies to, to physical death? They t try every other way possible. In fact, when, Jesus, when Lazarus died, Jesus said he's asleep. And then he finally had to tell him plainly, He's dead. Uh, you know, um, in, in 1 Corinthians, he talks about putting off this, this tabernacle. Uh, I mean, Peter talks about putting off this tabernacle or this tent. Rather than saying died, we just put off this tabernacle. And, and in, in Corinthians, Paul says that we're changed 
in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Uh, there's just so many different ways that they've used to describe death. It's not the end. It's not a, it's, it's the sting has been removed from death. Uh, like like uh, one pastor said, you, w when a Christian dies, they take one breath here and the next breath in heaven. It's an incredible uh, transition. It's a graduation. It's something to rejoice over. Jesus took the sting of death by enduring death for us. Isn't that great? Um, I don't know how people deal with death, really, if they're not a Christian, but with us, we know where we're going, and, and that makes all the difference. 1 Corinthians 2, 7 and 8 says this, But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So he's saying that the, the demon powers, the powers of darkness, didn't know that by crucifying Jesus, they were sealing their own uh, they, were, they were sealing their fate. They were defeated through the death of Christ. They couldn't wait to, to kill Jesus, to destroy Him. And that was God's plan, and they didn't know the plan. It was a secret. And uh, boy, it's not a secret anymore. Um, hey, Jesus was raised from the dead. He destroyed the powers of darkness, and He's given authority to us. And, and man, we need to get the word out. Ephesians 1.19, I, I quoted this just briefly. It says, And what is the exceeding greatness of His power toward us who believe? According to the working of His mighty power, verse 20, which He wrought in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and seated Him in His right hand in the heavenly places. That's like going from the lowest to the highest. He, he went from death to uh, resurrection and and seating on a th being seated at the right hand of God, and we're His body, and so we have been raised and seated with Him. We have that authority. The Bible says, "As He is, so are we in this world." 